Today is uh, February 11th, 2017, and uh, this is a video that I'm going to, I think I should do it in as much of it in, in as much of its entirety as I can. I will let uh, posterity take over. Um, today is August 27th, 2015. This is, guys, name is probably Ray Ray, or maybe Man Man, or Pookie. I'm surprised he's not, like, really light-skinned, but nobody, except for these guys, want to, like, procreate with a black woman, who wants to have sex with a black woman? Who wants to make a baby with a black woman? Unless somebody's drunk? This is the modern black woman. This is a... I took this picture. Um... She's not ugly, but I would not be attracted to her with her. This is at the Bernie Sanders um, rally in North Charleston this weekend, but this lady would not make eye contact with me. See her in the background right there? She'd make eye contact with me. She would hug me. She would kiss me. I just met her. Anyway, I don't have much love for the modern black women. Look at her hair weave. They had all the black women dressed in red. Look up the lady in red. Look up Eve. Look up Jezebel. But they've come to the point that they are. Nobody wants to have sex with them. Nobody wants to, except for these guys. You have a warrant in Highlands County, Florida. It is for not paying child support. You must have a lot of kids because you owe $48,650. Okay. I got 14 to kids. For you. Listen, can I ask? Um, How many kids you have? 14. I was in prison while, when this one was born. And I was trying to get custody of her. I actually went up there and the mother got... Okay. I've did this other videos about this. I'm going to close this part really fast because I got a lot of content here. This guy and guys like him in the black community impregnate one guy with 14 children. I don't know how many mothers he has. I doubt that there's one mother. He doesn't look that old. But he was in jail for 23 years. Who's having, where are the fathers? In prison. Because black women make babies with, like, guys who, they don't even care. They just want to get that, so that uh, uh, child support. And they're not getting it from him, obviously. He's $48,000 in the rear. You've accumulated a lot of arrears. It's $48,650. I haven't seen that sum in, I don't think, ever. I, I did 23 years in prison. But you know, I, got 14 I, I believe yeah. they abate the child support when you're in prison. This is the big issue right here. Man Man, or Ray Ray, or Pookie, whatever his name is. These kids, all these children are going to grow up and start making babies with each other. Because they don't get blood tests before they get married to, to see if they're related. Because they don't get married. They just have sex in the bathroom. Or by some type of um, deception by the black woman. Let me show you the black modern black woman. Thank you, Pookie. Or Ray Ray or Man Man. Thank you, Judge Mindy Glazer. Modern black woman. I'm just going to 
going to run this. Um, let's see. talking to my perspective into 2015 is that look at all the nice people who sit there and not do a fucking thing all right motherfucker get more motion out of their ass over a football game than some real theoretically real shit going on and they sit there and act like they don't see all the wrong that's going on because you know what nobody gives a fuck about what black women do God, help me, Heavenly Father. And but 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 help me. I mean, help me because they can do whatever they want to do, and I'm going somewhere with this. They can do whatever they want. Hey. Thank you, Tommy Sotomayor. Man, you are the man. I don't know how I would do my content without you. You inspired me. You inspired me. Because you're very good at what you do. And you help me get to be as good as, not as good as I'm going to be, but you definitely put me on the path. Peace and love. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TNN News, Raw and Uncut. With your host, Tom Sotomayor. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to TNN News Raw. I'm your host, Mr. Tommy Sotomayor. And a story that came from Atlanta that was sent to me by my girl, Jennifer Miranda. Jennifer sent me this story and said, you must do this story if you do no other story. Jennifer is a black woman. Well, she's really, really, really light-skinned, but she got Jesus hair, she says. But Jennifer thought, about what I talk about a lot, which is how crazy black women are. They're crazy as fuck, and people look at them as retarded children. Today, black women are so normally crazy that no one even steps in when they do out-of-line shit, like in this Atlanta quick trip, where this black woman decided 
And because she was just upset for some odd reason, she was going to destroy the place, and no one intervened. Take a look. This is one thing you have to understand as a man who seems to be more attracted to white women and more attracted to people who are positive. But there's a faction of those same women. I don't know where they came from, but they believe that anything that these do is okay and it's fine because they're the strong ones. They're the strong ones in the black community. That's what they, that's their freaking mantra. All right. Okay. This is them being strong. But this all is under. Oh, when I get out, I'm going to cast your ass on the wall. Call. Call. Don't threaten me. Promise. I promise you. I'm going to beat your ass. Call. Call. Now, the, 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 this is what begs the question, who's training them? Because when they, all the terrorism I hear about, and there's nobody that rivals these mugs. No one, nowhere is the black woman more violent. who's having sex with them. We've already established where the fathers are. What I don't understand is why Bernie Sanders would put one of these in his top front of his campaign. This is a chick. This is my good uh, mentor, Tommy Sotomayor. I love him. I hope he doesn't. I couldn't find this video anywhere else. But if you'll notice, the police officers wouldn't throw a punch. If they did, they would have been wrong. They wouldn't throw a punch. They wouldn't pull their gun. Because it was a black woman. Body slams one cops. Then guess what happened at the end of the video? Watch it, nigga. No, you won't hold your dick. You won't hold your dick. Forget, bro. 
corpse, girls in death, in corp, in corpse, corporation. You guys are so fucking stupid. But get on the bandwagon. She's going to lead you straight to hell. On a business plan, uh, a health center, a Girls Get Smart program that teaches girls that math and science is for us. Those are all things that Girls Inc. of Omaha is doing for girls specifically in this community every day, and I'm so excited to be a part of it. And I just want to give another round of applause to Girls Inc. for the work that they're doing. Girls Inc. taught me that being strong, smart, and bold is about being financially responsible. Being strong, smart, and bold is about believing that you can. It's about taking calculated risk, and it's about kicking in that proverbial glass ceiling. Yeah. And so today, I ask you to stand with me and support girls. Black women bite the apple. They chew it. They fucking eat the rind. They eat the skin. They eat the uh, stem. They eat the leaf. They eat the whole apple. Stand with her and Girls, Inc. No boys, no men. You are a freaking fraud, um, Simone Sanders. I hope I get a chance to talk to you directly one day. Community campaign, one gift, one girl at a time. The community campaign is not about raising an enormous amount of money. This is really about an enormous amount of money. And one gift, one girl at a time. I can't stand when they do that fucking hair flick. They want to be white girls. Black men, they hate you. They don't want to be black. They don't want to be black. Whatever black is, they don't want to be who they are. The community campaign is not about raising an enormous amount of money. This is really about getting the community involved in our Catherine Fletcher Center and really making sure that they are invested in the work that is about to be done. And so we will have brochures for our community campaign available with our lovely face on them. That will tell you more about our impending center, our new center in addition to the health and wellness center that we'll have. We'll have a new media literacy lab. When I did media literacy, we did it out of a closet. And now the girls will have a state-of-the-art center. Uh, we'll have a gym. We'll have a brand new kitchen. There'll be all these new additions in addition to our health center. Uh, and we really want the community to take part in that. So please pick up a brochure. And we are asking uh, each person to make a donation. Whether it's $5, $50, $1, or $10, we want you to be invested in this community campaign. We want you to be invested in the center. The first 1,000 donors of the community campaign will have their family names on the wall in our new Catherine Fletcher Center. So I encourage you to get in on the ground floor and make a donation. And again, I just want to say thank you to Girls Inc. for the opportunity. From the moment I stepped into the door, they really have cultivated me. Uh, they groomed me. And even when I graduated, I still come back for things. <laughs> so I just want to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope you will join me in supporting the community campaign. That's right. This is her turning her back on black men, black boys, her brothers. She's duplicitous. I don't like her. This is another video of the same chick. Different hair weave. She looks different every time. And her face is, is um, uh, she's a reptilian, I think. Samantha Sanders, and I have the privilege of serving as the National Youth Chair for the Coalition for Juvenile Justice's National Youth Committee. So I have a brother who is about six, seven years older than me, and when my brother was 15 years old, he went to jail. And he went to jail for like a minor drug offense. Like a minor drug offense. He could have went to drug court. He could have, you know, he could have got slapped on the wrist. You know, they could have put him in a diversion program. But they sent him to, uh, they charged him as an adult. And they sent him to the Nebraska State Penitentiary. And he sat in the Nebraska State Penitentiary for about seven and a half years. And he just recently got out of the Nebraska State Penitentiary. And I could just see the, the effects that it had on him. And throughout. Look at that. I don't think she's real. Look at her eyes, her nose. She's not like a real person. You know, fuck my young life. I mean, I got to do a whole bunch of amazing things, but no one would ever know that I had this brother who was in the band. You've got kids, you've got young people who just really made a bad decision. You've got somebody who's at the wrong place at the wrong time, and they're spending five, six, seven, eight years of their childhood gone. No problem, you know. 
don't have full football games, you know, no, oh my God, I snuck out, I got proud, you miss all of that. And you wake up one day, you look up, you're 25 years old, and I spent my life in the system. So what do you do? A system that's not necessarily, you know, that's not training you on a... This is what they're shoving down your throat, black men, America. They're telling you that this is real. Really great skill that you can use when you get out. A system where you have to fight to get an education while you're in there because they say you don't necessarily need it. Um. Okay, look these. I'm going to give you some things. Okay. Wikipedia. Not the most reliable. But it is information. And you can cross check the information. Wikipedia. YouTube, Wikipedia, free. Google is free. The internet is essentially free. A person can educate themselves if they want education. A parent can educate their child from what they learn. Education is not that expensive. Education came out of out of out of uh, slave. Shacks. Education came out of out of the woods. Where people, where black people would 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 risk their lives to learn how to read. And you got these Negroes today, and all the money you've thrown at education, you think that's gonna? No, it's the it's it's the it's the mothers that are the problem. It's these right here. It's these. These are, these are people that I know, like these are my brothers, these are my sisters, these are my cousins, these are my friends, these are people I grew up with, people I went to school with, people in my community. And the fact that we have the opportunity to fight for reauthorization, to fight for juvenile justice reform, it's, it's, our, it's our duty, it's our job, it's our responsibility to make sure that these things happen and we make a better system for you know our kids. Like These are, these are our family members. You know, if it wasn't for the JDPA, we, we wouldn't have things like a, a look at DMC Disproportionate Minority Contact in Nebraska. I'm our uh, statewide chair for DMC, and it's an issue. But because the federal government has said it's an issue, and we want you to look at it, people are actually taking a look at it. Without a reauthorization, there's not a really balanced stamp that juvenile justice is important. We're in a state of disarray. We're in a state of emergency. The, the state of juvenile justice, like we're, it's, it's dangerous. Kids being locked up at a crazy rate. You know, black and brown kids and transgender young people and LGBT. Young people, they're they're disproportionately being affected about by what's happening. But without the organization, we can't build those new things in there. So building those new things in there mean that you know kids will kids will have a greater opportunity to be successful. I do not trust the black woman. All right, they're unfriendly. They're violent. They'll kill you. I think you want both parents up. The child is the burden to the state. Now the state has to take all authority, not just in costs, but also they gotta pay somebody to raise that motherfucker.
me and Black Child, Yash Karash, many props to the brothers out there, you know, to, to the MGTOWs who are, like, leaving the, these women behind. I'm 55 years old. I don't mess with these independent, strong, rude divas. I don't, I don't, I see them, I cross the street. If there's some place a day or go that I know, I know that they go. That's why I don't go to fast food restaurants. I got the story about the the, the black girl rubbing the um, hamburger bun on the on the uh, restaurant floor. You're insane if you go anywhere where black women are. You're freaking stupid. Do not believe me. Whatever you do, do not believe me. Do not believe in your neighbor. Believe the scriptures. Look in the breadcrumbs that the Most High Heavenly Father Elohim, Yahshua, Jehovah God, my Father who is in heaven, left behind. Just make your own videos. Do your own research. Stop looking for a leader. You don't think all these people all are the same? It's it's the NFL. It's, it's a bunch of teams and one commissioner. One league. Alright? They're all in league. Stop being so gullible. Good night. That was, um, let's go back. It's, um, today is August 27th, 2015. That's days going by. They can do whatever they want. I want to, um, this is what this video is about, kind of, it's about Simone Sanders, but Simone Sanders is what they produce. In the liberal world, is that in the world, people can influence certain people to vote against their own interests, to advocate what is at their demise. I didn't come here to give an account for anybody, but I just want to show you the difference.
Now, this was the end of my career, my financial aid at Trident Tech. After I shot this video, I started failing. I started failing courses. Joy and pain. Sunshine and rain. I had it all at Trident Tech. Joy and pain. As you can see, this lady's about to get arrested. But there was a black lady at Trident Tech who did exactly the same thing and worse. And they paid her bill and they explained why she... she did what she did. White people, you all are being, this is my video that I showed. This video cost me in real time, but not in eternity, because I feel like I did what was right. They're not your friends. Of. But again, it's for, again, we're also talking, I'm not talking about relitigating whether or not Nick Parker was uh, is, was guilty or was convicted under the law. I'm talking about litigating this issue, taking this as an opportunity, because frankly, uh, sexual assault it, it is a part of black history. It truly is. What the fuck did she just say? UB News. Let me be very clear before I get into this topic. There is no hate between my point of view and black women. I am simply pointing out the fact that the media uses black women as propaganda arms for the white supremacist agenda. So many cases of divide and conquer that are perpetuated by the media that I'm not even going to bring up everything that we could possibly talk about because we would be here talking forever. Specifically, what I want to talk about is the movie Birth of a Nation, Nate Parker, and the story of Nat Turner at a time when we should be celebrating the fact that a black revolutionary movie is actually in the mainstream movie theater. The conversation has derailed itself into a topic about rape and sexual consent. We're talking about the person who created the movie was accused of rape 17 years ago. He was acquitted. Now since then, the accuser committed suicide. So now that Nate has gone on his promotional tour to put butts in the seats of the movie theater, he's had to answer questions about a rape charge that happened 17 years ago that he was acquitted from. So when we have these conversations and we use divide and conquer tactics to drive a wedge between black men and black women the way you do that is to paint a perspective from your agenda so instead of talking about black revolutionary history we're discussing the sexual history of the person who made the movie an idea so minuscule to compare that to the black revolutionary film that's basically going to set the precedent for new media across the board. The main reason that they don't want to... Go.
That's where I was going with that. This is that. This is what you have speaking for you, Simone Sanders. Let's end with that one. My video was in 2015. This is 2017. Four black teens under arrest in Chicago in connection with the beating of a white teen. The suspect shouting anti-Trump slurs as the attack was broadcast on... Facebook Live. Let's discuss now CNN political commentators Peter Beinert, Alice Stewart, and Matt Lewis, also Simone Sanders, a former press secretary for Bernie Sanders. Okay, so listen, there's certain things that we, I, I can't say that it's a hate crime because Chicago police won't say it. They're saying they're still investigating it. They're not investigating, they, they're not done with their investigation. But when you look at this, Simone, they're saying, uh, F white people, F Trump, how can you say it's not a hate crime against a white person? So I woke up this morning and there were about six or seven YouTube videos out on this Chicago kidnapping already. And then throughout the day, there are about six, seven more. So I'm not going to do one on the kidnapping, but I do want to expose Simone Sanders. I'm goddamn sick of this bitch already, and i only seen her a couple of times, but she is sickening. She's a racist. She's a race baiter. And she's the female version of fucking Steve Harvey. What, you think I'm joking? Look. Still don't believe me? Here's another one. I would have put this one first, but I didn't think the hair was round enough. So we're going to expose this moron for what she is, a racist, a race baiter. And hopefully sooner or later, this woman will be out of a job because she's a joke. But I doubt that anytime soon. So first I want to say this is absolutely sickening. Uh, it's... It's unfathomable that so much hate and anger can fill up a person where they go out and they think that this is okay. And then it was stupid to do it on Facebook Live, but that's a whole other story. So this is absolutely sickening, but I'm going to say something that's probably not very popular. Well, that's an unfortunate screen capture, but that's what she's going to say, of course. There has to be a but. But what about a dick also, besides a but? A dick for that open mouth. <laughs> Oh, let's see what this contest is saying. We cannot callously go about classifying things as a hate crime. Motive here matters, so... Callous. Callous. BLM riots, other blacks riot, and you are so quick to jump in that seat to talk to Don every time a black person is shot by a cop and talk about an oppressive police system that oppresses black people. But these accusations are callous when we have a videotape of fucking four black people torturing a white guy saying fuck whitey. You expose yourself massively in your first goddamn sentence. Was this for hate of Donald Trump, uh, the president-elect, because of things that he has said, or was this for pure hate of white people? That matters, because if we start going around and anytime someone says something or does something really egregious, really bad and sickening in this instance, in connection with the president-elect um, or Donald Trump or even President Obama, for that matter, because of their political leanings, mm -hmm. that is slippery territory. That is not a hate crime. Hate crimes are because of a person's racial ethnicity, their religion, their gender, a disability. It is your political leanings because someone doesn't like your political okay. leanings and they do something bad to you. That is not a but hate Alice, crime. But Alice, even hate crimes, aren't all hate crimes motivated by stupidity? So right away, she's trying to wiggle her way around it. You know, we got to make sure we can't jump to conclusions. But like I said, I can jump on here every single time a black person shot, even if they wrestled with the cops and tried to fight them and take their gun and shoot them. I can come on here and tell you white people are racist. But you, you have to take your time and wait for the facts and don't do anything because if you jump to conclusions and you're wrong then you're just furthering hate along you're making people feel a racist atmosphere that isn't really there you know like blm and everyone who talks about black lives matter or whenever a black person is shot by a cop and they come on the news and talk about that stuff when it's not racially motivated you know, like every single time. So that's one thing that's funny about that. And then another thing that's funny about that, you know, going after him and saying, fuck you, whitey, fuck Trump, 
that's not about white people either. So I guess, like she said, she said it herself, even for Obama. So I guess when all those white people say fuck Obama, they're not racist now, right? And one more thing. It's so funny how she says, if you're just saying fuck Trump, that's because you disagree with his politics, right? It's just about his politics. It's not racism. But Trump's politics on such things as immigration and crime are what have caused these people to call him racist. Isn't that ironic? Isn't that huge cognitive dissonance right there? Bigly. Well, like I said, guys, Miss Steve Harvey here is a fucking pig. She disgusts me. She should be exposed for what she is, a racist and a race baiter, and just a complete hypocrite. And we're probably going to see more of her, too, because I've seen a lot of her the last couple of months, and I'm sure that's just going to pick up the rest of this year. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to go now. I'll probably have two videos out over the weekend or something, so I didn't want to make this one too long. You could watch the clip if you like, and... Until then, I'll see you. Good night. You can't say that white lives matter. You got to believe that you're that you're to blame. You can't say that white lives matter. governor and Democratic presidential candidate, Corey Lewandowski, former Trump campaign manager and CNN commentator, who we should note is still receiving severance payments from the campaign, Andre Bauer, CNN political commentator, and Simone Sanders, former press secretary to Bernie Sanders. I have to start with you. What do you think about the outreach? Do you think there's a chance it's going to work? Well, I think outreach is an interesting word to use, Dan. I wouldn't use that word at all. Look, I think a little bit of rhetoric from Donald Trump is not going to erase what we already know about him. This is the man that started his campaign saying Mexicans are rapists and they're taking our jobs. He has built a campaign of divisive rhetoric, of inflammatory rhetoric, of at times racist rhetoric. And what we saw last week is, is it wasn't real outreach. All of the speeches that Donald Trump gave were to predominantly white crowds. Uh, and if Donald Trump is very interested in reaching out to communities of color, specifically African Americans, perhaps he should have taken invitations from the, some of these minority serving organizations that asked him to come speak, the Urban League, the, Nash, the NAACP, the National Association of Black Journalists and Hispanic Journalists. So I find it very hard to believe that Donald Trump is interested Secondly, it is not only disingenuous, but downright insulting the, the way in which Donald Trump has chosen to do this quote-unquote outreach. Your schools are failing. You're, you have no jobs. You're, does Donald Trump think all black people are poor and The right hand of white supremacy, if there's a such thing as white supremacy, black women have been leading the way and talking out of the side of the neck. Yeah, everything you just said doesn't make it any less true. Or anything you said doesn't make it a lie. Have you heard about Detroit? Furthermore, that all black people are Democrats because they're not. So I really think that the Republican Party and the Trump campaign, for that matter, they have to take a very hard look at what outreach looks like. Definition of outreach is. I know there's some very capable people that they have now hired let me, at let me the get, committee, and that they're not letting them do their let job. Let me get Corey in there. You know what is amazing is the hypocrisy of these statements. Donald Trump is saying we want to include African Americans as part of the GOP. The Democrats have failed you, they've taken advantage of you, and now he's being criticized for asking for their support when the criticism prior to that was he's done nothing to reach out to them. When the criticism, you know, Donald Trump yesterday spent a, some time in uh, New York having a leadership meeting with his prominent Hispanics from across the country talking about what he can do as the next president to make sure that you know, they have their interests represented. And we don't see any of that. What we have is the hypocrisy of saying we don't like the way he's doing it, as opposed to saying, you know what, it's about time, it's a good thing, and growing and asking people to be part of the GOP, reminding them that it's the party of Lincoln, is, is a very good thing for the party, and it's a good thing for the country. So okay. the hypocrisy well, of the, the way it's done is ridiculous. Then it would be a good thing were it not for the fact of the total hypocrisy of Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump cannot talk about the party of Lincoln. Uh, Donald Trump's immigrant bashing 
uh, and racist rhetoric would make Lincoln roll over in his grave, Corey. I mean, the fat truth of the matter is Donald Trump wouldn't even repudiate the support from from a Klan leader. He retweets racist mimes that are put out. And he says, oh, I'm not really making that up, Corey. He says, these are just things I'm repeating that other people do. And on, I don't think that that was really outreach to the very diverse uh, African-American voters throughout this country. That was a reinforcement of uh, a stereotype about black people generally. I mean, you want to see some success of the American dream? Look at so many of the African-American families here in Maryland. Look at those young people in the Olympics winning gold medals. That's what our country's about. Andre, before I bring you in, Corey, do you want to respond to the okay, I, I think, I think to be clear, you know, Mr. Trump has repudiated the Klansmen who have said that they support him. He said, I don't know him. I don't want his endorsement. I want nothing to do with him. I'll be very clear about that. He has said that. Moreover, if you look at what he has done recently, and he has met with African-American pastors around the country. If you look at the people who spoke at the convention, whether it's Daryl Scott or Mark Burns, who are consistently at his rallies talking about what that is. Daryl Scott, who just on this network this week said that all black people believe is satire. Daryl Scott, who engages in the race baiting if you, if you and the attack, racist if you rhetoric Scott, that that's in the, the racist you're welcome, rhetoric that Donald Trump, Trump does. These well, are the facts, Dana. Welcome, do that, but the here's modern the day Republican the Party, party is not the, 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 the party of Lincoln. Look, the modern day Republican Party is a radical conservative party. Barack Obama has failed the African-American population. There are less people now. the African-American population today makes less money you on average than they did four years ago. What outreach has the Trump campaign and the Republican what Party for that matter? Hillary Clinton done? Pardon me, we can get to that in a second, but no, no let's talk about Hillary what Clinton. She's the one who's on the ballot. Campaign? I know he wants to deflect, but what outreach has the Trump campaign what? and the Republican Party for that matter done to to reach out to prominent African American Republicans in their own party? There are prominent he has done dozens of meetings. But Hold on. We'll have to go back a little bit. How many mothers he has? I doubt that this one. The reason why we're here, Simone Sanders, black woman. I'm just gonna run this.
they're making this into a Isis goddess worship the matriarch society. I'm out of it. Actually, as their first junior girls Inc. Uh, board member, and most notably to introducing former President Bill Clinton at the 2006 lunch with the girls. All right, all right. Yeah. Pause, work off. <laughs> but really, um, I cannot even thank Girls Inc. for the endless opportunities they provided to me. Uh, I can't say enough about it, and for that, I'm forever grateful. I truly believe exposure and access are the keys to living out one's dreams and making them a reality, and Girls Inc. of Omaha does that for girls in this community every single day. Every single day. You know, there's not another, and I worked at Girls Inc. National, so I can confidently say this, that there's not another Girls Inc. around the country where you can hobnob with former presidents and future presidents and international dignitaries on a, you know, yearly basis. Uh, you can't write award-winning national public service announcements uh, and produce your own movies, uh, a robotics program that is producing some of the brightest young girls that I've, I've ever met. Uh, programs that allow girls to write because he's the girls, 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 girls. One thing you have to understand, they hate boys. Black women hate their men. Black women hate their men. They hate their men. Girls, girls, girls incorporated. Corpse. Girls in death. In corp. In corpse. Corporation. You guys are so fucking stupid. But get on the bandwagon. She's going to lead you straight to hell. On business plan, uh, a health center. A uh, Girls Inc's Get Smart program that teaches girls that math and science is for us. Those are all things that Girls Inc of Omaha is doing for girls specifically in this community every day. And I'm so excited to be a part of it. And I just want to give another round of applause for Girls Inc. For the work that they're doing. Girls Inc taught me that being strong, smart, and bold is about being financially responsible. Being strong, smart, and bold is about believing that you can. It's about taking calculated risk, and it's about kicking in that proverbial glass ceiling. Yeah. And so today, I ask you to stand with me and support girls. Black women bite the apple. They chew it. They fucking eat the rind. They eat the... That's from 2015. This is 2017. I'm telling you that the prominent African American publicists, people that I know have said that there's been no outreach to them from the Trump campaign or the Republican Party. Secondly, there have been dozens second, of meetings that they covered wildly. Secondly, Donald Trump launched Donald Trump's campaign. This is laughable to me. Donald Trump's campaign launched his African American outreach effort without Donald Trump. <laughs> and, uh, without Donald Trump, he was at the in meeting. North Carolina, no, 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 in North Carolina, uh, just a couple weeks ago. So that's again, not true. To say Simone, you're Trump absolutely factually incorrect. To say that you're Donald Trump is interested, incorrect. all I want to notice to say that Donald Trump is actually interested in reaching out to African okay. Americans. Look, that is not let me, the way to let me bring let me do bring it. Andre, who's been waiting patiently, uh, and, let, and let's just look at the data. Clinton with with African American voters, according to an NBC Wall Street Journal poll, last taken, Clinton, ninety one percent support from African Americans. Trump, 1%. I get the idea of reaching out, but doesn't he have more uh, groups that are more likely to come to him that he should be reaching out to since this is such a, a huge disparity in terms of support? Well, first, let's say that both parties have left the, the African American community, quite frankly. They've been taken for granted for far too long. It's been a hand a hand in the wrong direction. There were so many opportunities to help people lift themselves up that have been missed. And so I'm glad the Republican Party and Donald Trump, under his leadership, is now doing something about it. We can criticize him all we want, but he is making an effort, and I'm glad he's making an effort. Democratic Party ought to reach out and do a better effort as well. I'm not criti I'm not. I'm trying to tell you that for once. I'm happy that somebody's doing something positive. And so it's easy to get caught up and to beat him down. I wouldn't. He's not doing it the way I would do it possibly. Let's 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 turn uh, Governor. All right, we're getting to the end. This has been a long video, but it's been worth it because we're going back to 2015. In my opinion, and Simone Sanders is, uh, she's everything that I expected of her. And defense attorney. Uh, Joey, let's start with you. I mean, obviously, just a horrific videotape, sickening to, to see. Um, how likely is it you think these hate 
crime charges will be successful? I think it's very likely. I mean, you know, there's a couple of ways to talk about this. From a human perspective, where is the humanity? What has society become and what doing to serve as legitimate examples for our young people such that they believe that this is not only acceptable behavior, but behavior that should be funny and, and that and everybody should look at. Right. Exactly. And so I do think when you look at the statute itself that talks about hate, it's predicated upon two things. Number one, prosecutors would have to establish that this was motivated by some racial component, maybe because this victim was white. But number two, also because of the mental impairment and disability. And when you have them behaving in that fashion, it doesn't, I mean, take a rocket scientist, think about who's going to be evaluating this. You have jurors, right? People who you could use their common sense and good judgment, and they'll have to, that is jurors make a decision as to whether this was something motivated by race or motivated by any mental impairment. So I don't think it's that much of a stretch at all for those hate crime charges to stick. Simone, I know when you first saw this yesterday on, on uh, camera, I think you said that it was certainly sickening. You weren't sure if it constituted hate crime. Do you still think that now that prosecutors or the police are actually charging this? Well, I think we need to, I, I think the the prosecutors have, have done the right thing. They found they found all the reasonable cause they needed to find. I think it's dangerous for folks that aren't legal experts like myself, in fact, to have this this really in depth conversation about the legality of something because I think it waters it waters it down and kind of takes away from the disgusting, the sickening acts that happened. And I think that's some of what transpired on on the air last night. But People were angry on social media saying, Well, how could you not say this is wrong? So I, I, perhaps we should. I should be looking at it. What's more the so hesitancy from the, though to use the term hate crime? I mean, if this was for, you know, skinheads uh, doing this to an African American teenager who had a disability, wouldn't it be fair to call it a hate crime? I think yesterday when it's a today it is absolutely a hate crime. But yesterday on air when it okay. all broke, we didn't have all the details. You know, we were. Uh, but you see speculating. it now as a hate crime. I, I definitely, I definitely do. I have, I have seen, I have seen all the. All Details, but regardless if I think it's a hate crime or not, I think we're we're having the wrong conversation, if you will. I think the conversation needs to be about uh, what was that young man uh, feeling that was being assaulted? How did we get here as a community where these kids think it's okay to go out and do this? Why are we so polarized? And I think that's a separate conversation from is this wrong? Absolutely it's wrong. And I think a lot of times we're in the heat of the moment right. when things first happen and we've got our uh, initial reactions. But I really think taking a step back, you know, it's, it's more so about, yes, this is wrong, this is disgusting, these young people should be prosecuted, justice should be served, but we need to have some additional conversations, okay. I think, about our society. Danny, I mean, it is extraordinary that these uh, four who were doing this had no qualms about streaming this live for you know, 30 plus minutes. We live in an amazing era for law enforcement, and I've seen this in court firsthand. Uh, social media, criminals will often post what they did on social media in cases that would otherwise... Or even what they're going to do. What they're going to do uh, in cases that would otherwise be no case for the prosecution. A defendant single-handedly makes the case against himself by posting images or video of him essentially committing the crime. So we're in a new era, you know, there's dash cam video, body cam video, and social media, but which is, is capturing all this stuff, and that is called evidence in court. But, but I mean, are, do they... All right, Simone Sanders, are you nice white people who love black women because black women is the one who is a strong woman in the black community and blah, 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 doing the same thing to you that they did to the black community? Dean, also in the running uh, for DNC chairman, and... I wonder what you think. Uh, you're a Keith Ellison person. Having no, are you not? Are you I not? Have not thrown, no, I have not thrown my. I know my former boss has thrown his weight. Okay, well then, actually, this Keith is Ellison, e okay. This is even not better. My weight behind then you're even an even better person to ask this <laughs> question of. You have Howard Dean and others who support Jamie Harrison. That's right, Jamie Harrison, and their line is that Keith Ellison, who is more to the left of these other guys, that he. Since he's a sitting congressman, since it appears he wouldn't leave that position behind, Debbie Wasserman Schultz had worn the two hats. And, and you know what? That doesn't work. That doesn't work wearing the two hats. Do you think that's a real criticism, or do you think that that's people trying to get some cover for not wanting someone who's so, so liberal 
to be at the helm of the party? I think it's a little bit of both. I definitely think it is difficult when uh, you have a, a chair that is a sitting member of Congress or has any kind of other job because there's two sets of staff. There's DNC staff and then there's office staff. And whenever you want to get something done quickly, you just can't go through the DNC staff. You also have to go through whatever particular office staff. Like I think Keith Ellison is great. I have worked with him. He is an amazing. He is a fighter. And he's committed to the issues. But Howard Dean? Howard Dean, you know, Howard Dean was there for that 50 state strategy. But here's the issue. Howard Dean is also on record maligning young people and millennials, telling those Bernie folks they just need to get in line and maligning Bernie Sanders. And that is not what we need. In my opinion, we don't need white people leading the Democratic Party right now. The Democratic Party is diverse and it should be reflected as so in our leadership and throughout the, the staff at the, top, at the highest levels, from the vice chairs to the secretaries, all the way down to the people working in the offices at the DNC. I think we need to have a robust discussion about this. And I think we need to hear more from all of the candidates. Jamie Harrison in South Carolina, he's great too. He has done real party building, but everybody doesn't necessarily know Jamie, and they want to know what it is that he stands for. So yeah. I want to hear more from everybody. I'm here for the millennials and the brown folks. <laughs> well, all you white people who live black women too much, this is where y'all This is where y'all going. This is where you're going. This is where you're going, and you, it's going to be your mother. It's going to be your daughters. If you keep following the Democratic Party against your interests, and, and it's, the Democratic Party is against everyone's interests. Check. Black woman steals from store, teacher pays bill, and talks to students. She doesn't get arrested. She doesn't get dragged off in her wheelchair. Do not believe me. Look, believe your eyes. I am so glad to be finished with Trident Tech, and I'm so glad. Not to have to deal with those old black bitches over there. They favor black women over anything more at, at trying to take anything else. They get the most money. They get the most consideration. I like what I got from trying to take. Good night.